Hi folks, Ron from RJM Music here. Today I want to show you a little overview of our upcoming Mastermind GT Editor software that's going to be available for Mac and PC. Uh, this software will allow you to edit your Mastermind GT settings in a way that's uh, a bunch easier than um, doing it on the Mastermind GT itself. And so let's uh, do a quick overview. First we're going to start out on the, uh, the program starts out on the global page. Um, we're not going to get into too much detail here, but we'll just say that these are kind of the the uh, you know top level parameters for the whole system. Um, probably the most notable thing here that you'd be using are the expression pedal settings, but that'll be the topic for a different video. Let's go over to the devices page, and um, this works just like it does on the Mastermind GT itself. Um, you have a list of 16 device slots and any one of those can be set to uh, a number of devices. We have a database built into the Mastermind GT itself and also this software that allows you to um, select device by manufacturer and model. Here we're selecting a Fractal Audio Axe FX2 and the uh, database knows the uh, MIDI parameters for the device, uh, the controller numbers and, and the MIDI banking strategies and all that kind of stuff, so you don't need to deal with that. Um, about the only thing you'll need to set is the MIDI channel, and we'll say this device is on MIDI channel 2. Um, it comes, uh, like the GT itself, set up for a single one of our Rack Gizmo units, but um, of course you can go in and change that to anything else you like. Um, we'll set up a third device here, and um, this is what you do if you don't have your device listed by name in these lists. You can always select generic and uh, PC CC device. And so this basically allows you to just set it up manually like you would on most other MIDI controllers by typing in um, the numbers like the, uh, the PCs, the banks, and uh, controller numbers manually. And um, well, we'll leave the names as they are for speed here. Uh, now let's go over to the buttons page. And this is a, a virtual representation of the Mastermind GT buttons. And this is where the editor gets really powerful. Probably the first thing you'd want to do is uh, right click on one of these. And this gives you a, a quick way to edit these buttons. Um, the menu here allows you to choose uh, the button type, um, whether it's a preset button, instant access, bank up, bank down, etc. And we'll, we'll leave this one set as instant access for now. Um, Another thing you can set here is the button grouping, and uh, this is uh, beyond the scope of this uh, video, but you can set up button groups so that uh, only one button in the group is allowed to be on at a time. And now the most important thing here is assign CC, and this allows you uh, quick access into assigning functions to a button. You can see our two devices here, the Rack Gizmo and the Axe FX, and um, the generic device doesn't show up here because we don't have any uh, built-in list of devices, or I'm sorry, a built-in list of controllers in there. And so um, let's say we want to assign this button and we want to make it the chorus block of the Axe FX2. Uh, we click and now it's chorus 1. We can go over here, do something similar, assign CC Axe FX2, and we'll make this, let's say, the first drive block, drive one. And we can continue doing that. Um, these other buttons were already defined for the uh, rack gizmo that was that was predefined in the system. Um, we can, you know, keep them as rack gizmo uh, functions or or change them, whatever we want to do. We also have uh, buttons here for the external switches that you can con connect to the Mastermind GT. And they're assignable just like anything else. We can assign them to any function on the device. Um, another really cool thing is we can drag and drop. So let's say you want your bank buttons over here. You can just drag and drop, and it swaps the button with its, uh, it swaps basically the two buttons, the one that you started with and the one you dropped on. You can move things around any way you want. Um, if you want your preset buttons up here, doesn't matter, you can put them any way you like. And so this is a really fast way to uh, set up your controller. And then if you need to get further on, in, down into the uh, parameters, all you need to do is double click one of the buttons. Um, 
some of the things that you could do in the uh, the menu, the type and the group and all that. But there are also some uh, individual settings. Uh, there's the uh, the button name itself. Uh, let's say we can call this uh, like let's say that function switch would control the amps effects loop. So we can call it that. Um, you'll note that the uh, that we actually use the actual font uh, that we, that's used on the Mastermind GT, so you'll know exactly how the display is going to look when you, uh, you know, as you type the name in, so you can see whether it's going to fit on one line or not, or fit in the display at all. Um, you can change the colors of the of the buttons right here, and uh, you know, to anything you like, both the color when the button is off and when the color the color when the button is on. And uh, then most importantly, we get into the button actions. And this is the list of things that the Mastermind GT does when you press the button. You can see that our first thing we're doing here is what we defined on the, uh, the other page. And on the Rack Gizmo, we're controlling function switch three. And it'll tell you the details of the, uh, the, the CC number and the on value and the off value. Uh, we can continue to add functions. Each button can do up to 10 things. And let's say we also want to uh, add a CC to it. And uh, we'll have this uh, window show up here. And let's say, well, in addition to switching this effects loop on our Rack Gizmo, let's say on our, on our Axe Effects, we also want to control the, um, I'll say the delay block. And so we set that. And now we have uh, both functions. And so now when we hit this button, it's going to turn both of these on. One of the other nice things is we're not limited to just controller messages. We can also uh, hit new action here and we can set the type. And not only can we send uh, controller messages, but we can send program changes, uh, note on off and uh, do some system functions as well. Let's say we want to send a program change to our uh, generic device. And we can set, you know, we can send program change 20 to that device. And so that, uh, that takes care of that. And so now we have three functions or three actions assigned to this particular button. So we can say we're done here. And so now you see our, uh, our effects loop button is, is there for us. Okay, so now we can switch over to presets. And I've uh, done some uh, basic naming of some, some dummy presets here. So we had something to work with. And for each one of these, you can set the preset name um, you can set uh, expression pedal settings specific to that preset, which is uh, different than the global settings that we had in the first page. Um, we can override um, the global settings on any preset we like. And then we can send program changes to each device for each preset. So um, when, the, when the box is checked, it allows you to uh, send a preset or you can uncheck it so it won't send anything and then you can uh, set up which program changes are set for each device. We can say like for this one, we want to send program change seven to the Axe FX and program change two to the, the PC CC device, the, the generic device. And then down here is the really cool part where we can decide which IA buttons are on for this particular preset. So we can, for example, go over here and turn on the chorus and maybe loop three on the rack gizmo. And then uh, if we go to the next one, you can see it goes back to the default. And we can pick, um, let's say, the, the, uh, the drive block on this one. And over here in the crunch one, let's say we'll turn on like functions two and four and loop one. And so you can repeat this for all of these. And you can turn on any uh, of the IA buttons on any of the pages and have it saved to that preset. And so you can see that it remembers the different settings that I uh, that I had put in there. Um, the other thing that it will remember is the uh, is the page as well. So we can say that this uh, for this one we want to see button page one, um, and we can say for preset two we can have button page two come up. Now we haven't defined button page two, but we can uh, pretend that there's something useful on this page. And so as we switch from uh, preset to preset, the button pages will also change in addition to any uh, instant access buttons we like. Moving on to the songs page, uh, a song is basically a user-defined bank of presets. So 
you may have your presets in a particular order, but you can use a song to gather up presets you need um, to play a particular song. So we can we have some uh, dummy names in here again, and uh, we can pick up a uh, the, like the first song in the preset. We say, well, the the first preset we need is this uh, is this phase preset. The second one we need is this blues preset, and the third one is the crunch preset, and the fourth one we're going to need is the uh, the smooth lead preset. And you can do this for each one of these particular songs. And so instead of on the controller, instead of stepping through just for the, the first group of presets and the second and the third, we're actually going to go from song to song. And in the preset buttons, it'll display the, uh, the presets that we listed here for each song, and it'll display the song name at the top of the screen. This is really useful for bands that play a particular, um, you know, fixed set list and uh, makes it easy to keep your presets together even when you do change from uh, change your set list from time to time. Um, these, uh, these are all uh, drag and drop enabled, so you can just take a, a song and uh, move it in its move its positions and put them uh, anywhere you like. And so reordering your song list is is super simple. Um, same thing with the presets within the song. You can you can drag and drop those as well and, and reorder them, and that'll change the order they show up in the preset buttons. And then finally, we have set lists here. And just like a song is a group of presets, a set list is a group of songs. And so you can tell, like you can have, say, like your main set list, and we'll even call it that, main set list. And you can just um, select your songs. Let's say we're just going to do we can just, you know, pick up We don't, there you go. Okay, and so we've uh, set up songs in the set list. You can have a secondary set list. Let's say you, you know, if you have like a short set, you can uh, just pick something smaller. And so anyway, so it's this is all up to you, and you can define anything you like. And then you, um, in the global page, you can pick which set list is going to be used uh, at that particular moment for that particular performance. And the last thing we'll talk about today is the uh, loading and saving. The nice thing about this editor, you can uh, load and save to disk. Uh, you can load and save to the to a USB flash drive, which can be you know loaded directly into the GT itself, or you can uh, connect the GT to your computer using a, a USB cable. Um, just plug straight in, and um, you can connect directly to it and send your uh, settings to and from the Mastermind GT. Uh, and this uh, program will work with a uh, PC running Windows 7 or Windows 8, or a Mac with running um, OS 10.7 uh, or 10.8, uh, Lion or, or Mountain Lion. And that's it for today. We're going to have more videos on more advanced topics on the editor. And if you have any questions, please check out our website, uh, our forum especially, at www.rjmmusic.com. Thanks.